So I've got a really massive and heavy workbench, which is great, right? Because it helps you do your woodworking. But I need to move it, and I need to be able to move it easily so that I can maximize the space of my workshop. So today we're gonna to take a look at these retractable workbench casters. We're gonna see if they are a great solution that I'm hoping they'll be. They might be a good solution for you if you need to move your heavy workbench. We're also gonna take a look at these uh, quick release plates, which I think are gonna be a master key to making this whole thing work. Uh, we'll talk about some pros and cons. We'll put it on the bench and we'll see what happens. So let's get started. Hey, thanks for stopping by to check out this video. Just in case we're meeting for the first time, my name is Tom Bills. I'm a professional guitar maker. I've been building guitars since about 1998. And I also have the amazing privilege of helping other people improve their guitar making skills or even learn to build their first guitars through theartoflutheri.com, this channel, of course, and my online guitar making platform called The Luthier's Edge. I'll be sure to link to those things below, and maybe I'll mention a little more at the very end of this video in case you're interested. But for now, let's head over and let's check out these workbench casters and see if they really are gonna solve my problem of needing to be able to conveniently move uh, this big giant heavy workbench and maximize my workspace. Okay, let's start by just taking a quick look at the casters themselves and the quick release plates and just talk about the design and things like that. So. I did, some, uh, I did a lot of searching to figure out which set of these to get. I ended up settling on the Powertech type. Um, they're actually a little cheaper, at least when I looked, than the Rockler. Um, and the thing that really sold me on them was the fact that most of the reviewers said that, uh, and I looked for anyone who had both casters, and the people who had both the Rockler retractable casters and the Powertech um, almost always said that the PowerTech seemed like it was made out of thicker metal. And to me, that's my big concern. My big worry as I was looking into all this is that it wasn't going to be able to pick up this bench because this bench is crazy heavy. I mean, it is, I can barely pick it up. So I'm a little worried even now that this might not pick it up, but we're going to find out here in just a second. Um, but anyway, the my first impression as I, when you open the box, you essentially get... Uh, just all these parts here. And my first impression was was really, um, wow, they are heavy duty. They weigh a lot. The metal's actually really thick. And um, these plates here are pretty beefy because these plates I think are gonna carry a lot of weight as you push your foot on this. So the weight is gonna transition on this plate here and it has sort of a shape to it to give it extra strength as well, which is awesome. Um, <clears throat> really simple though, I mean, there's not much to them. It's just the, the mounting, the bracket here with the lever and the wheel and um, a little bag of screws and uh, lock washers and nuts. And um, yeah, so it's, it's pretty simple. So, but my first impression is awesome product, seems really well built. Um, I'm a little nervous, but I have really high hopes that I think it's probably going to be okay So uh, to pick up this big old bench. All right, so let's take a look at the quick release plates and how all that stuff works. That's what comes in this little box here. Now, the thing that's so cool about these is that uh, I, I didn't put these on my bench earlier because when they are not engaged, they're actually they're sort of up in a position like this, and they're kind of sticking out. And so, you know, if this is your, let's say this is the workbench here, the workbench leg. And so around all the edges of your workbench, you've got these things sticking out, you know? And I don't know about you, <laughs> but I don't need anything else to trip over or accidentally, you know, trip me and make me drop something, drop a guitar I'm working on or whatever. So I love the convenience of moving the workbench, maximizing the space, but it was never really a good um, solution because it comes with a side effect of making four little trip wires hanging off the edge of my bench. So that's when, when I saw these quick release plates, that was the moment where I was like, wow, that is cool. That makes this thing work. So now what you do with these quick release plates, we'll just use this as an example. We're gonna put this on the actual bench, but uh, <clears throat> actually, <laughs> forget it. Let me just show you this way. The thing, um, there's a pin that goes in this to lock it in, and 
it just slides on like that. So basically the only thing that you're really screwing to your workbench is this plate. When you want to move your bench, you slide this on, you push down on it to engage it, you move your bench when you're done, you release it, pull out the pin and slide this thing out. And now you can use this on other workbenches, which I plan to do. And then each one will just have a set of these locking uh, are these uh, quick release plates. So these are an amazing thing. And that's why I was saying at the very beginning of this video that these are the key that makes this whole thing work, at least for me anyway. Okay, so getting ready to start work. And I'm one of those annoying people that loves to read the directions. Um, if I get some furniture to assemble or pretty much anything, I'm gonna read the instructions first. That's just how I am. I know it's, <laughs> some people do great just winging it, but I love to read the, the directions. So the first thing I did is I pulled the directions out of these two things and read it. And um, I was thinking that I could use the screws from the casters. So there's a set of screws that comes with the casters. And then there's a set of uh, bolts and washers and nuts that come with the quick release plates. And so I just thought, well, hey, um, the bolts aren't gonna work for me because I, these are, I think, two inch bolts, or I don't know what they are, but maybe two and a half inch, probably two inch, I think it's two. Two inch bolts, and the two inch bolts, you know, it's not gonna help me because I got four inch, four by four inch legs. This is a humongous workbench. And so I thought, well, you know, no problem, I'll switch it out and I'll just use the screws until I read that there are two, the, there's these two different mounting uh, techniques. However, the bolts that it comes with have a, I think it's called a bugle head, I'm not sure, but they're made to fit into the countersink of this. That way it's not gonna interfere with the caster sliding in. So it also looks like it's gonna increase alignment and give it some more strength. Whereas the screw, just the bottom of the head is just flat and so if I put that in here, I've got a sloppy fit and the round shape of the head is gonna stop the caster from sliding in. No problem though, I'm glad I figured that out before I drilled my holes in the workbench. And I ran up to the local hardware store and I got some wood screws. These are number 14. And I went ahead with two and a half inch screws. These are the wood screws that it comes with for the casters. And so I'm going quite a bit deeper. I'm going about an inch deeper. And I just felt like it was a nice precaution because this bench, like I've said probably too many times in this video, is really heavy. So I'm going with a little longer screw, but it's the same size. The shape of the head fits perfectly and aligns really great in here. And uh, I think it's gonna be a solid installation. The tools I'll be using to install this are really simple. Um, it's really nice if you have a drill and an impactor. Um, these are great tools and they just make it a lot easier to switch back and forth so you're not changing the bit um, every time. Um, you do have to be careful with these though, even though these are my small, these are my favorite little Milwaukee ones. They look tiny. These are perfect for guitar making. I use this for all my guitar making stuff. I don't do a lot of home improvement or uh, a lot, of, I usually don't do a lot of workbench building type stuff though occasionally. Um, but when I do, these things have plenty of power. But when I'm working on guitars, um, they are really great. They just have all the power you need. They're small and I trust them uh, when I'm drilling, you know, sometimes you drill a create a hole in a crazy place on a really expensive guitar and you just need to feel secure that the drill is going to uh, perform the way you want it to and not wobble or the bit fall out or anything crazy like that. So um, these are great drills. Can't say enough good things about them. Uh, rest of it's, you know, more basic stuff, crescent wrench. This is just for, in, for uh, actually assembling the caster where you put the wheel onto the bracket. Super easy. I like to use a little marking gauge like this when I'm doing my layout. It just makes it faster. Set it once and then you can mark the rest of the legs. They all match. That's great. Little something for accuracy to mark my drill where I'm going to drill just really helps to increase the accuracy of the hole so the drill bit doesn't wander. Pencil, a couple rulers, you know, pretty basic stuff. So uh, I think we're ready. Let's put these on and see how they work. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is measure up four inches to the hole. And because I'm on this sort of padded surface, it's a little tricky to figure out, you know, where exactly the bottom of that is. So. Uh, the easiest way is just take this uh, thicker steel rule and sort of wedge it kind of at the bottom there. That's gonna help me get this smaller rule 
aligned properly. Once I have that in place, it helps me make sure it's right. I can mark my places where I want to drill my holes, which is two and a half inches and four inches. And then we just get our center. Okay, so there you have it. It was a huge success. Those things picked that workbench up like it's nothing. And uh, I couldn't be happier. I can't be, uh, I couldn't recommend them more. Um, I'm absolutely thrilled. You might be able to tell because my head's just swimming with all the new ways that I can use this space, how I can really not just maximize the space, but make it multi-purpose and uh, use this for all different applications here in this one little area. So. I'm pretty thrilled. It's a great solution for me. And if you're looking for something like this, it'll probably be a good solution for you too. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you're not a subscriber to The Art of Luthery here on YouTube, uh, I hope you'll hit the subscribe button. And um, I also encourage you, if you're into guitar making or thinking about learning uh, more about guitar making, check out theartofluthery.com and The Luthier's Edge. My goal in everything that I do on those websites is to help people um, build their guitar, to find their own creative outlet, to go beyond that uh, sort of step-by-step, paint-by-numbers, cookie-cutter type of instruction, and just really help people understand why, help them make their own creative choices, and really express themselves through their work and take it to the next level. Um, I also really work hard to try to help people avoid all those dumb mistakes I made when I was learning, so it shortens their learning curve and helps them build their best guitars. It's really a lot of fun, so if you're into guitar making, go check that out. The links to all that stuff, plus the casters, and I'll probably link up any tools or anything too that I showed just for the heck of it as well below in case you guys need it. Um, and that's really about it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.